So we're going to work through problem M1-12. That's on page 29 in your textbook. So M1-12 says, Stone Culture Corporation was organized on January 1st, 2012. For its first two years of operations, it reported the following. And we're given net income for 2012 and 2013, dividends for 12 and 13, and then total assets at the end of 2012 and 2013. Uh, the problem also says, on the basis of the data given, prepare a statement of retained earnings for 2012, its first year of operations, and 2013. So we definitely need to do these in order. Uh, so we are Stone Culture Corp. This is our statement of retained earnings. And our first one is for period end 1231-2012. If you recall from the chapter, the statement of retained earnings shows all the changes to the retained earnings balance uh, that happened during that current period. So we always start with the beginning retained earnings balance. We're told here that that's in fact zero because 2012 is Stone Culture's um, first year of operation. Okay, so never a beginning retained earnings balance if it's our first year. To that, we would add net income, and this would be for 2012. So that number was given as $40,000. And from that, we would deduct or less any dividends declared and or paid during that same period. Okay, so dividends for 2012 we had fifteen thousand dollars so our ending retained earnings balance is in fact that zero starting balance plus the forty thousand we added in net income minus the fifteen thousand in dividends okay, and we'll pretty this up just a little bit to show that we're starting and ending there okay. so if we recap that first year Again, no beginning balance. This was our first year of operations. We would add our net income for 2012. Remember, net income increases retained earnings. We would deduct dividends declared for 2012, dividends being a return of capital, not an expense. So $15,000 there, and that leaves our ending retained earnings balance at 25,000. Now, if we do the same for 2013, I'm actually gonna copy my header over here. I'm gonna copy my columns over as well, just to save a little bit of typing. So now we're doing the statement retained earnings for period end December 31st, 2013. That's that second year of operations. So my beginning retained earnings balance is gonna be equal to my ending retained earnings balance from the previous year. Okay, so 25,000 is where I'm starting. To that, I'm gonna add net income for the year 2013. That was given at $45,000. I'm gonna deduct dividends declared for 2013. We were told that was 20,000. And we can uh, come up with an ending balance based on those items. So again, beginning balance, 25,000 plus net income of 45, minus dividends of 20. I kind of spelled it out in the formula here just to be a little more clear. It means our, means our ending retained earnings balance for 2013 is $50,000. So the trick with the statement retained earnings, it's kind of our most uh, simple financial statement, if you will. Only a few items we need to keep track of. We need to worry about whether or not there's a beginning balance in retained earnings. We'll find that on the previous period statement of retained earnings and or the previous period's balance sheet. We also need to keep track of what we had for net income for that period or net loss. And then also need to keep track of whether or not we declared or paid any dividends for that period. As I alluded to a moment ago, keep in mind that this ending retained earnings balance on this statement of retained earnings is gonna match the ending retained earnings balance on the balance sheet for that same period. 
Okay, so if I looked at my balance sheet, I would see retained earnings, $50,000. Now we were given total assets information for both 2012 and 2013, but that's just superfluous information for this problem. They're really just throwing that in to make sure we know that we don't have to use it. Okay, retained earnings has nothing to do with assets, so we don't need to account for those asset dollar figures on our statement of retained earnings. Okay, this is exercise 1-1, and that's on page 31 of your textbook. So E11 says, use the following table and the equations underlying each of the four basic financial statements. Show A, that the balance sheet's in balance. B, that net income is properly calculated. C, what caused changes in the retained earnings account, and D, what caused changes in the cash account. So that first one said show that the balance sheet uh, is in fact in balance. If we think back to our, our reading from chapter one, we know that our balance sheet demonstrates our basic accounting equation. And that equation is that total assets equal total liabilities plus total stockholders equity. Okay. So let's see what we have here. We know that our total assets in the box in that problem are $18,200. Let's see what we know about liabilities. We've got a total given there of $13,750. And we're given a total for stockholders equity of $4,450. So again, our balance sheet or our basic accounting equation says total assets equal total liabilities plus total stockholders equity. Well, on this side, we have total assets at 18,200. On the right-hand side of that equation, we have total liabilities, 13,750, plus total stockholders equity, 4,450, and there's 18,200 as well. So we are, in fact, in balance from a balance sheet standpoint. A letter B asked us to determine that um, net income is properly calculated. Well, if we think about our income statement, think back to how net income is, in fact, calculated. Our income statement equation, if we want to think of it that way, says that revenue total minus expenses in total equals net income. Okay. Here in the box we're told that total revenue was $10,500 for the period. Total expenses were $9,200. So again our net income should be the difference between those two. $10,500 minus 9200 and there's net income of $1,300. If we look at the figure for net income in that box, uh, it gives us the same $1,300. So yes, net income is in fact properly calculated here. C asks to determine the changes to the retained earnings account. Uh, so we knew our beginning retained earnings. So I'll put beginning RE was given at 3500 I'm going to skip a few lines and we're told that our ending retained earnings balance is 4300 Well, there are a few things that can change retained earnings, right? If we think back to our statement of retained earnings, those things primarily are net income or loss and dividends. There are a few others that we get to in later chapters, but for now, those are the two primary components. So here we're told that our net income uh, was $1,300, and we just proved that in letter B. And then dividends, we were told, were $500. So now we just need to think about the direction uh, that those actions would take on our retained earnings balance. So begin beginning retained earnings of $3,500, Net income, since it's a positive number, would increase that balance. So to our 3,500 beginning balance, we would add 1,300 in net income. Dividends are a reduction to retained earnings. They're a return of retained earnings. So we would subtract the $500 dividend figure from that amount. 
and that would give us our ending retained earnings balance. $4,300, and that matches what we were given for our ending retained earnings balance of $4,300. So we're okay there as well. And then our last item, item D, asks us to determine changes in the cash account. So we were given beginning cash, and that was uh, $1,000. We were also given ending cash, I'll stick that down here after skipping a few lines, of $700. So we had a net change to cash of $300 in the negative direction. Right? We had 300 less dollars in our ending cash balance than we had in the beginning cash balance. We were also told some information about our statement of cash flow activities. We were told that cash flows, um, I'm going to abbreviate here from operating activities, were $1,600. And that's a positive amount. So we had cash inflows, I'll just mark that off to the side here, of $1,600 from operating activities. We're also told that cash flows from uh, investing activities were a total of um, $1,000 in the negative direction. That just means that's an outflow. Our net flows were um, out versus in. And we also had cash flows from financing activities. And that was $900 in the negative direction as well. So again, there's an outflow, okay? So to determine the ending balance, we just need to net out those three components and reconcile that with our beginning cash balance. So we started with $1,000 in cash. We added to that inflows of 1,600 from operating activities. We deducted 1,000 in cash flows from investing activities and we deducted 900 more in cash flows from financing activities. So our ending cash balance should be $700, and there it is, it matches what we were given for an ending cash balance of $700. Okay, this is exercise 1-3, and that's on page 31 of your textbook. 1-3 says, DSW Inc.'s a designer shoe warehouse selling some of the most luxurious and fashionable shoes at prices that people can actually afford. Its balance sheet at January 29th, 2011 contained the following, listed alphabetically, and amounts are in thousands. So we're given a bunch of numbers in the yellow box there. And the requirement says, first, prepare the balance sheet as of January 29th, solving for the missing amount. And then we'll worry about part two. So here I've already put a, a short header in. We just have our company name, the name of the financial statement, and then the date. This is as of January 29th, 2011. So on the balance sheet, we always list our assets first. Here for assets, we're looking for, again, any item that the company owns, right? Anything that's gonna provide some future economic benefit as we define an asset. So cash always kind of jumps out to us. That's 93617 there. And let's see what else we have. So we have accounts receivable. If we recall from our reading, accounts receivable are um, amounts that are owed to us as a company, probably from customers. Uh, and then we're given this all other assets amount, which is very significant, 692375. Okay. And then I, I just realized we're missing one in here. Property, plant, and equipment, certainly an asset. Those uh, pieces of machinery that we own, right? Land, maybe any retail storefronts that we own as opposed to lease. We were told that was 210391. And then in fact, we were given a total assets number to reconcile to. So that number again is just gonna be the sum of all those other asset accounts. So I'm gonna use Excel sum feature and just double check the number that the book gave us. 
So that's 108897, and that is in fact the number that the book gave us there for total assets. Okay, so next we'll worry about our liabilities. Liabilities again are amounts we owe to other people, creditors primarily. Uh, so we are right off the bat seeing that we have some accounts payable. And the amount of 149722. We also have some notes payable. For the most part, we can assume, at least at this stage, that anything with the word payable at the end is in fact a liability, right? Some amount that I need to pay or I owe to someone else. We're also told that we have some other liabilities here in the amount of 122822. So I like to kind of um, subfoot the total liabilities here. Sometimes on balance sheets, you'll just see a figure for total uh, liabilities plus stockholders equity, but really we should have this subtotal for total liabilities. Again, this is the sum of all our liability kind of line items here. 368133. And now we need stockholders' equity. So stockholders' equity, we were told that we had, we had contributed capital. Again, we can think of that kind of the same as capital stock, money that's been invested by the owners. 314382 for that. We also had some retained earnings. Again, those were past earnings of the company retained for future use. 326382. Uh, and that covers it. So now let's get a total stockholders equity sum here. That's just our contributed capital plus our retained earnings. And now we want a bottom line for total liabilities plus stockholders equity. Because again, that's what we're trying to foot to, to reconcile versus the total assets we found earlier. So this total liabilities plus stockholders equity, just our total liabilities from this line here, plus our total stockholders equity there. And in fact, those two numbers in this case do match. So my balance sheet is in balance. Okay. Remember our balance sheet simply proves that my total assets are equal to my total liabilities plus my total stockholders equity. That's our basic accounting equation. And we've demonstrated that here in our balance sheet. The second part of that problem asked us, uh, as of January 29th, did most of the financing for assets come from creditors or stockholders? If we think back to our definitions of assets, liabilities, and stockholders' equity, we know that our liabilities are generally things that we've um, borrowed from creditors, right? So our accounts payable, our notes payable, borrowed from suppliers, borrowed from banks maybe, in terms of notes payable, those bank loans. So our liabilities, we say, are financing um, coming from our, our creditors. So our stockholders equity, that's financing provided by owners. Okay, that's dollar amounts contributed by the owners in, in the form of capital stock or contributed capital, and then past earnings of the company. So in this case, the stockholders equity amount is quite a bit higher. Uh, it's approaching twice as much as the total liabilities amount. So we would conclude here for part two that most of our financing for assets has in fact come from stockholders. Okay, so part two again, most of our financing coming from stockholders here.